I've finally had the chance to try something I've wanted to do for a long time. Recently, I rediscovered my dad's old photography kit and I've been looking to try out his lenses on my Sony a7 III. They're over 50 years old now and carry a great deal of memories and history of them from my dad's time at sea. He used both Minolta and Practica camera bodies. Unfortunately, I could only find the Practica, but luckily, all of his lenses were still there. There was quite a range to choose from and experiment with, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna focus on the 28 mm, the 50 mm, and the 75 to 205 mm. Using vintage lenses on a Sony mirrorless camera is actually quite simple. All you need is your lens, an adapter, and your camera. The majority of my dad's lenses are Minolta Rokor, and so I needed an MC to Sony E-mount adapter. For the lenses that had a practical mount, I used the same small additional adapter that my dad used to switch lenses between his Minolta and Practica back in the day. The first step is to attach the adapter to your lens, making sure there is a secure connection. Then attach both of them to your camera body. Some lenses will have a switch that you'll have to twist to make sure that the aperture blades can be controlled manually. Again, make sure there is a secure connection here. The next step is to go into the menu system and enable release without a lens. For the Sony a7 III, this is in the second camera menu on page four. This needs to be enabled as vintage lenses don't have any electronics in them. And so your camera body won't recognize if there is a lens attached otherwise. A final step I would recommend is turning on focus peaking. As you will have to use manual focusing with vintage lenses, Having focus peaking enabled just makes life a bit easier. If you have an external monitor, having it enabled on that as well is a good idea when you need it. I also like to use the manual focus assist feature to get critical focus by zooming in quickly to five or 10 times. And that is basically it. Now you're ready to go out and shoot. I didn't do any extensive critical or scientific tests, but I did shoot against a color checker with all the lenses wide open to demonstrate a quick comparison. These shots have just a standard Rec 709 conversion LUT applied to them. I then did a few quick tests in the house and around the garden, and I must say, I was quite impressed with the images I was getting. The first lens I played around with was the 75 to 205. It's a very heavy lens with a solid metal build, and so I decided to stick it on a tripod and do a bit of bird spotting with it. Next up, I gave the 28mm a go. I don't mind this focal length, but I would have preferred a 35mm, as I always find 28 isn't quite wide enough or tight enough. And finally, I took the 50mm out, and this was probably my favourite of the bunch. This opened all the way up to 1.4, and so you're able to get a very shallow depth of field if you want. I had to use a variable neutral density filter with all of these, along with some step-up rings, as it was so bright outside. The one thing I may buy for these for future use is a focus ring adapter, so I can either use a follow focus or just get some extra control when pulling focus right off the lens. Overall, I'm very impressed with how these lenses hold up on a modern mirrorless camera, and the images they produce are fantastic. They're able to take off a bit of that digital edge without the need for additional filtration. To give these images a bit more of a filmic look, I've been testing out the beta version of the Hansa 7. I've talked about the Hansa a few times on this channel, and I must say I'm impressed with this latest version, which includes several updates. For full disclosure, this is not a sponsored video, but I have been given access to Tahansa Pro and the latest beta to try out. I also have an affiliate link in the description if you'd like to save 10% when purchasing a license for yourself. With that out of the way. This new version brings several new features and improvements, including a redesigned core engine, a new film damage tool, tool profiles, and more. The redesigned core engine in Tahansa 7 offers a number of performance and quality improvements. For example, the new engine can now process images up to four times faster than the previous version. Additionally, the new engine uses a more accurate and sophisticated model of film, which results in more realistic and natural looking results. The new film damage tool in Tahansa 7 allows you to add realistic film grain and damage to your images. The tool offers a number of different settings, so you can fine tune the look of the film damage to your liking. I won't talk too much about the grain tool as I've done a whole video on it before and you can take a look at that here. The damage setting controls the amount of damage to the image such as scratches, dust and dirt. The Hansen now offers tool profiles as well. Tool profiles are pre-configured settings so that you can quickly achieve a specific look. For example, there are tool profiles for different film looks, different lighting conditions and different creative effects. These profiles include 8mm, 16mm, 35mm, 65mm, daylight, night, and creative. Here are some more examples of the Hansa 7 in action. It's been a lot of fun trying out my dad's vintage lenses and grading them with the Hansa. I can definitely see myself using this setup a lot more in the future, as I was quite impressed with the results I was able to get. Thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos on low budget cinematography and filmmaking in general. I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.